The chapter 5 map is massive, and I don't know about you, but I still have no idea where the best drop spots are. That's why today, I'm gonna land at every pro drop spot, and we're gonna discover the absolute best drops versus the worst. Now, the first thing that we need to know are the chests and mythic spawns, and this map shows us that the most chest spawns happens at fencing field, which is also where one of the best mythics is, Nisha's striker AI. So on my drop to fencing, I actually landed a little short, but got lucky because no one tried to land on me until this player jumped through a window to give me a free elim and some siphon mouth. I landed on the opposite side of Nisha, and so I could see that she was being taken down by another player. And this is probably the biggest issue when landing at mythic POIs, because if you're not the one taking down the boss, then you have to fight a player early game that has a healing medallion and a mythic weapon. That's usually a pretty hard fight, and it's never just a 1v1. There's always more players trying to sneak into third party. Like here, I pushed over and tried to initiate a fight with the guy with the medallion. I got one player, but they weren't the one with the medallion, and then I just barely so short to the player with the actual myth. From my experience, fencing field is one of the hardest drops on the map, and honestly, unless you're a really good fighter, I suggest just staying away. But the spot with the next highest chest count is Snooty Steps, which also has maybe the best mythic in the game. Peter's pump. And a key aspect to every single one of these POIs is that for it to actually be a good drop, you have to have a good land. Landing either short or landing after everyone else already lands sets you up for a massive failure. If you do that, literally every POI is going to be bad. But you can see here that I take a 50-50 with this guy and end up winning. Now unsurprisingly, the two POIs with the best mythics have the most players dropping there and the best players in the lobby drop there. I made a play on this guy and got the elim and then I dropped on his loot for extra mats, but another player was already there. Meanwhile, another player jumped on my back. So I had to hold my wall while also fighting this player in their box, and then this player with full HP sprays in and one-shots me. So Snooty to me is the hardest drop in the game, I'd say with fencing fields being the second hardest. So again, if you're not a super strong fighter, I heavily recommend staying away from these two spots. You'll almost never make it out alive. Thankfully though, there's three more mythic drops that aren't near nearly as chaotic, and the one that I tried next is Lavish Layer, the spot with my personal favorite mythic, Oscar's auto shot. Unless this place is a hot drop on your bus path, usually there's not a ton of players landing here. You'll always have a few, but it's much more reasonable compared to fencing and snooty, and if you land up at the top, you can usually pick someone off right away like I do here. Now if you want a mythic and medallion, regardless of where you drop, you always have to fight for it. But here at Lavish, the players aren't nearly as good as the more popular mythic spots. So I fought one, then fought another player who might have actually been an AI. Then as I was preparing to fight the Oscar, AI, I heard someone sneaking, and this literally always happens in solo. Thankfully, I heard the player this time and took them out before continuing on to Oscar. And my tip for taking out these AIs is to have four or five guns in your inventory and then just spray as fast as possible. This decreases the chances for someone else to come in and sneak up on you, and you heal all your shield with the medallion. So even though it wasn't entirely easy, Lavish Layer was the first mythic drop spot I actually made it out alive. The fourth mythic drop is Reckless Railways, which is where Valeria's Hyper SMG is. Now personally, I found that landing on the outskirts of the mythic drops and then getting looted up is way better than dropping straight into the action, so that's what I did here. Surprisingly, I didn't see or hear anyone, so I just went ahead and fought Valeria, and these AIs take forever to eliminate in solo. Unless they decrease the health of these bosses, then you just kinda have to be really careful about not getting snuck up on by a real player. In this game, I actually didn't have that happen. So far, this was the easiest mythic to get by far, with literally no one else dropping here or even rotating in while I fought the boss. However, I'll definitely say that I got lucky because I've dropped here other times and there's definitely been other players here and usually they're pretty good players. But even with that, this is still one of the easier mythics to get. The last mythic drop I went to is Grand Glacier, which I'll say right off the bat is my least favorite mythic drop out of the five. I mean, even the mythic weapon, Montag's Enforcer AR, isn't that great. Aiming for the roof is a good idea, but on my drop, I missed it and had to land in the back. The hard part about this drop is it's one big building full of AIs and real players. So there's no landing on the outskirts option. You're just instantly in the action and with the AI footsteps mixed in with the real players, it's super hard to not be caught off guard by a real player. On my drop, I played really passive and tried to let everyone fight each other and then when there were just a few left, I ended up getting involved. And even then, I narrowly escaped this fight with just 2 HP before getting pushed by another 
other player who I honestly probably should have died to, but I clutched up and beat with one single HP left. Again, at these mythic drops, there will always be a third party, sometimes a fourth party. I mean, everyone wants the medallion so the fights can get crazy. I took out Montag from the roof, which is actually a pretty good strat, but of course, the fighting wasn't over yet. People really want the medallion. I sniped this player rotating in from behind the tree, and while looting them, I got pushed by yet another player. The only thing good about fighting players that are rotating into the mythic POIs is that I'm the one with the mythic weapon in the medallion. So if you are able to survive a mythic POI, usually the fights against people rotating in are made a little bit easier. So I took that player out, then I sniped another player, and by the time I actually left Grand Glacier, I had five elims and was top 20 already. Like a large portion of the game was already over, and I was just now leaving my drop spot. So if you really want a mythic weapon in a medallion, I think Lavish Layer is the easiest. I'd say then it's Reckless Railways, then Grand Glacier. The other two, both Snooty and Fencing Fields, are in a league of their own, being insanely hard to make it out of alive, unless you're literally a borderline pro. Especially in rank, I will probably not drop these POIs the rest of this chapter. But Mythic Drops aren't the only drops in Chapter 5. They honestly might not even be the best drops. So the first non-Mythic spot I tried is Pleasant Piazza, and it was a breath of fresh air compared to every Mythic Drop. Only a couple of other players landed with me, but there was plenty of loot to get a solid loadout. It turned out that both the players that landed here were, I think, AIs, so they just gave me some free loot, and I was able to leave so easily. I mean, Mythics and Medallions are great, but this super chill drop is nice after dying off spawn a bunch, or if you just want to chill more. You still get good loot at a main POI, and then you can rotate out, and you can push either Fencing or Snooty to try to grab one of the really good Mythics and Medallions. But again, the best players are landing there, so the players that are coming out of there are probably stacked on loot and probably really good at the game, so use your best judgment if you want to go and fight them or not. Now the next, and what I thought would be the most underrated drop spot of the video, is this unnamed place northwest of Snooty. The big reason for landing here is because you can get looted up and then Fencing and Snooty are really close by, so you could rotate over and clean up players that are most likely in shambles to pick up the mythics. And all of this was actually true. When reviewing my games, I thought I died here, but that wasn't the case. This drop was completely uncontested. I was able to get fully looted up, get a bunch of mats, and I didn't have to fight a single person. So I figured with pretty good loot, full health, some extra shields, I could just push over to Snooty, clean up the final player, and walk away with the mythic pump and medallion. But when I got there, it looked like it was completely unlooted. Peter was still alive. And then just as I was about to go fight Peter, I saw that there were actually still other people here. So I broke into this box with my auto shotgun and got the job done, but it left me pretty low on HP. And like I've said, at these mythic POIs, especially at Snooty with such a good mythic weapon, players are gonna third party to no end. It's actually ridiculous. And so this guy probably on zero ping just sprayed straight through my wall and cleaned us off. So the drop spot is actually a really good drop spot, but you still have to be good enough to be able to beat either Snooty or Fencing Field. But again, the drop spot itself was actually really good and gave me a really good opportunity to get mythics and medallions. Then Ritzy Riviera was my next drop, and we're coming up on some of the final drop spots of the video. This place was pretty far off the bus path, and it still had a good amount of players land here. So if you don't want to fight a ton of players off spawn, and you want a good chance at making it out alive, if Ritzy is anywhere near a hot drop, you're definitely going to want to avoid it. But if it's not, it's actually a pretty fun place to fight. There's nothing really surrounding it, and there's no mythics, so you don't get instantly third partied, and that means you can just really fight whoever is here. Like, I took out one player and then I made this Barry Shockwave play to clean up a fight way on the outside. Then once the players at Ritzy are taken care of, it's really chill. Again, no one's rotating in, and I walked away with some really good loot, too. Now, there's only two more named drop spots left, and one of them is Classy Courts. This drop is honestly pretty small, and I don't think there's a ton of loot. It's kind of, like, open and a bit weird. And the big issue that I had here is that someone landed at a nearby house, and then after they got looted up, they got in a car and WKG. 
straight to class. The reason that's bad is because if I was in a fight already, this third party could have easily came in and cleaned us up. So that's something to look out for. And honestly, it could have happened. I mean, I got sandwiched here between the two players that landed classy. So I was able to make a play on the worst player. I got the elim, got the extra mass, and was able to box up before the other player came. Once I got the elim on him though, this place is really out in the middle of nowhere. So you don't typically have to worry about fighting many other players or having to battle a stream of third parties. From classy, I got max mats, decent loot, and overall I made it out alive. So I'll call that a win. Now the final named POI of this video is here at Hazy Hillside. I think if you're going to land at a named POI, there are almost always going to be players that contest you, and that was no different here. It might have just been me being unlucky, but here at Hazy, I literally looted an entire building with absolutely no weapon. Like my loot was really bad. Even after eliminating two other players, my best loadout was two enforcer AR. Somehow I still managed to take out the player with the seemingly only shotgun at this entire spot. And then from here, this drop was really easy. Basically, at any of these non-mythic drops, you don't have to worry much about third parties because no one is rotating in. So as long as you can take care of the players that drop with you, then you get to loot the entire POI and rotate out. You don't have to worry about much else. So as far as which drop spots are the best, I'm personally going to put Lavish Layer at number one because the mythic isn't that hard to fight for. Plus, the mythic auto is like my favorite mythic in the game. I'll put Pleasant Piazza at number two because it's chill, you get good loot, and you can go fight for mythics if you want to. Ritzy is probably my third favorite because it's chill and isolated and there's no third party. And it's kind of just a cool POI. All the rest of the drops I tried in this video are about the same to me, except Snooty and Fencing. I literally hate those spots with a passion. And I'm telling you, unless you're in bot lobbies, if you drop here, whether it's in ranked or pubs, you have to be probably the best player in the lobby to walk away from these spots alive. And even if you are the best player in the lobby, it's still not a guarantee that you'll even leave alive because you'll have to fight so many players. Like, it's really bad. So hopefully this video helps you figure out where to drop in chapter five. Make sure to subscribe and thank you so much for watching.